Hi guys, my name is Roger. Welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to talk about chord progression on the MV8800. Yes, chord progression. I know there are people who are very interested in using chord progression on the MV and we all know that the MPC-X, well, the new MPC units have chord progression and the MV doesn't have that. So what is chord progression? Well, very simple, it's uh, putting your piece of gear into a mode that every pad has a chord. Aha! Aha! That's also possible with the MV. Yes, in a different way, but it is possible. I found a way how to do this. And I must admit, I was pretty surprised myself too. Um, this question was asked by Leonardo, also known as Get The Boys Productions. He asked me, please Roger, how can you do this with the MV? And we all know the MV is already an old machine, it's from 2007. Well, the MV8000 is from 2003, I guess. And so those kind of features are not standard in the MV. But I'm going to show you how to do it, how to do it with the MV. And I tell you, I tell you, yes, you have to be, well, you have to have a little base of uh, notes and how they work and how to combine them. Uh, but anyway, it is possible. It is possible with sampling. So let's dive into this. I will show you how it works. And I must admit, it sounds really, really nice. Ready for it? Here we go. Let me start again the loop. And I will play with the cutoff frequency of the sample. Some resonance. Right. Okay, cool. So what are we going to do is play with this. Check it out. Every pad has, in this case, a chord. And I'm going to show you how it works. And it works very simple, very simple, but pay attention. First, we are going to sample a note. I'm going to sample, in this case, my uh, Vsint. So I go to sampling and I have to turn down the volume of the MV because I'm using coaxial out and coaxial in and to prevent feedback I have to turn down the volume so now it's on coaxial if I play my keyboard you hear the sound and you see that the MV is ready to sample so let me start I start sampling and I stop and I stop sampling. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to do a preview. So I do preview. I can open up now the volume. Without any problem. And I'm going to zoom in. And let me go to the start of the sample. All right. It's over here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So we see that's the start of the sample preview. Great. Then I'm going to truncate and to normalize the sample. I don't make it a loop. It's just like this. Now do a quick assign. So I say a quick assign and I will assign it to a patch. So assign it to patch. And then the following. I have to search for an empty uh, patch. In this case, patch number seven is empty. And now I make it a keyboard. So I make keyboard and I say from one from bank one to bank six to pad number 16 it will be spread over the keyboard this sample and I do execute now I, I will change the input select to analog to prevent feedback so I've sampled this sound and I will, you know what? No, I'm going to create another MIDI track. 
I say add MIDI track to number three. Oh, this audio, sorry. MIDI is number two. And it needs to be output assigned seven. That's the new sample. So I do execute. Um, let me change the name of this track also. So I do name in this case. I say um, roads. I will use the mouse. I do roads. Here we go. R H O D E S roads. Okay, right. Like that. Great. Close. So this track is roads. And if I play now my keyboard, this is the sample, this is the sample of the V-Synth. And you also hear it that because it's spread over the keyboard that the high notes are very ugly to hit. Very, very, very ugly and also the low notes, listen. But anyway, it's fine. So now I want to have chords on the pads. So let me change this to pad bank, well, pad bank number three. So now we have only one note. Hmm. But I would like to have an chord like this. Something like that. Okay. So I'm going to do the following. I go to instruments, now I go to patch edit, and I go to partial edit, and now we dive into SMT. So in SMT we see just uh, one sample, it's sample number four, and number four is the switch is on, so it means when I play a pad, you will hear the sample, level is 127, pen is on uh, the center, pitch uh, is normal, that means that the keyboard pitch is just normal from low to high. Um, tune course is zero and fine is also zero. Now here it comes. We are going to add the same sample to number two. So we're now in number two and I say I want to have sample number four over here. And now I'm going to adjust the parameters and this one needs to be also on norm on normal and I would like to have this chord which is um, a sharp D sharp uh, D uh, D sharp and G so the first one needs to be um, let me see one two lower because we're counting from C. So this one is like this. Okay. Now we are going to add another sample. The same sample, of course. So again, number four, I select it. And we do it on norm. It's over here. Then I know that this one needs to be plus two and this one needs to be counting from three uh, from C on plus three. And now the last one, the last sample, also number four, we do the same, norm. And now we say, counting from C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it needs to be 7. All right, like this. So we have minus 2, plus 2, plus 3, plus 7. For one note, check this out. So now every pad has this chord.
All right. Okay. I won't play too much. Okay. So that's already step one. Now I can, for example, adjust the filter. Because I've spread the sample over the keyboard, this sample will be... Um, all the adjustments of the parameters will affect the complete keyboard. So I will, I will change the filter. I will change it to LPF, for example. Now I can lower the cutoff frequency. And if I play now with my, in this case, my connected remote zero SL, something like this, some reverb, very nice. Now I can also, for example, with this sound, which is in this case just a road sound, I can um, add an LFO filter. And check this out. Wow. Um, let me change the rate. I will have it BPM synced as a, a whole note, well, quarter note. No. Eighth. Sounds very nice. I can also adjust the amplifier. It's too much. Let me put it on 25. Both on 25. Right. Now what I can do is, for example, if I go to exit and I go to solo portamento, I can make it mono. So, so when I play a pad, I can only play one pad at a time with that chord and I can turn on the legato switch. Check this out. The uh, sample will not repeat itself and if we add also some portamento to it and also in legato and some portamento time of 25 that sounds wonderful And this is how I created this simple, simple loop. Let me show you again the instruments, excuse me, the instruments, because I started first with a piano sound. Let me change the bank. It's just a normal major. Then I created the same patch, but then with a minor. Oh, let me change the pad bank also to number three. So, part number one. And part number three, uh, two is minor. I will change the pad bank of this one also to number three. This is a totally different chord. This one needs to be changed also. And this one also on three. And this one also on three. Oh, it's already on three. Perfect. So, 
this is my way to have cords on the pads so use SMT make some combinations of cords and then you have all major chords or all minor chords or different kind of chords guys just my way to use chord progression no midi clips no sampling in, in in strange ways or whatever just using smt no it cannot be done with midi sounds only with sampled sounds but this is something guys this is something thank you so much and we we'll see each other next time have a good one bye bye